Hello everyone, welcome back to another Friday and another Eagle Moss review from yours truly, Captain Foley of Trek Yards. If you haven't subscribed to Trek Yards yet, get on it. If you haven't subscribed to Captain Foley personal channel yet, why not? Let's do it. Let's get those numbers up and help us out. Also make sure you hit like, and as, as I said, hit subscribe. Um, but anyway, yes, as I said, I am Captain Foley, as my shirt does say. You can see there, Stuart Foley, Captain Starfleet. Um, and it is time to look at another Eagle Moss ship. This one, of course, is Star Trek. I do other Eagle Moss ones on here as well, including Alien figures, Predator figures, um, ships from other franchises from Eagle Moss, as well as Battlestar Galactica and a few other things. So if you haven't checked those out, check those out as well. Lots of Eagle Moss reviews on this channel and lots more to come, so stay tuned. Today we're looking at a really good one. We're going to be looking at... One of the standard collection. I've been doing a lot of XLs lately. Uh, what we're doing, going back to one of the standard collections. You got the standard box, Star Trek, the Delta, and then all the other uh, ones there. Voyager, DS9, TNG, and Enterprise. No Discovery because the Discovery ones are um, separate. Um, maybe there'll be lower deck ships and stuff coming. Who knows? But that's what we're looking at today. You can't really see it. What is it? It's a mystery. No, it's not because you read the thumbnail in the title. Um, but here we go. We got the Reliant, or at least the Reliant Concept uh, special issue. So this is the Reliant <coughs> as it was originally designed, excuse me, um, with the nacelles on the top. I've always been interested to see what this would look like and to actually hold a model of it to get a feel for it, whether it would be better. And now we will know, we'll find out. But here it is, as you can see. And down here we got some facts about it. Miranda Class Original Concept by Jennings and Miner. So let's get into the book and see what we got. I haven't looked through this book yet so this will be interesting. Uh, obviously over here we got the how to put it on the stand. That's there every time guys for every one of the Eagle Moss ships so check it out. Also here we got a view of it from the front and it's a different feel for sure. Um, it does seem wrong. It does seem like it's upside down, um, but we'll, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Um, down here are some specifications. Class Miranda, concept for Star Trek II, designed by Joe Jennings and Mike Miner. Uh, there on the bottom you can see some close-up shots of the 3D model uh, that they used to create this model for Eagle Moss, which is some pretty great details. Um, we're going to look at the details on the actual model itself in just a minute here. So let's go through the magazine first and see what we have. So USS Reliant, it, Reliant Rejected Concept. Um, a great shot of the ship. It, it is quite an interesting looking ship. Uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, better or not. Um, but it says here, in its original configuration, the USS Reliance nacelles were above the saucer, making it more like a cut down enterprise. Uh, so on the next page, and this is really great actually, we got the, the orthos for the ship. So really nice orthos. Um, again, it's a cool ship, but that front view looks wrong. All the other views look fine. Uh, they kind of look like FASA designs. Um, you know, if you played the, the game FASA uh, Star Trek Bridge or uh, Combat Simulator or Starship Combat, um, but they had sh stuff like this. Now people give me heck for calling it FASA, but that's the company that made it, but it's still FASA. If you're a Star Trek fan, you hear FASA, you know exactly what people are talking about. It was a role-playing game. A lot of really cool ships designed for that. Some not so cool, but some interesting designs. And this looks like it would fit right in there, so. So here we go, designing the USS Reliant. Uh, over here we got the original drawing of it from the back, and it says, the original concept for the Reliant shows its origin as a cut-down version of the Enterprise with a saucer and nacelles, but no engineering hull. Over here we got some storyboards, uh, really interesting ones, uh, with the original Reliant design on there. Um, it says, by the time Samuel Peebles was working on the ship, the Reliant had become a smaller ship with a unique design. These storyboards show an early version of the battle with the Enterprise from Peebles' script. 
script. And um, yeah, it even shows the the rear photon or the the rear the lower photon tubes uh, modules firing there, which is really cool. Um, here we got a little and or little storyboard that's it's basically the Enterprise, but it says Reliant there. In, its, in the earliest versions of the story, the Reliant was a Constitution-class ship like the Enterprise, but the producers were worried that it would be difficult to tell the two ships apart. It's one of the other reasons they decided to go with the nacelles on the bottom, as opposed to the top, because people that are watching might get confused as to which ship is which. No, we won't. We're not stupid. Stop thinking your audience is stupid. Anyhow, <laughs> next page... <coughs> We got the a couple drawings here, and it says these drawings for the Reliant show its origin as a cut-down version of the Enterprise, but at this point the nacelles were mounted above the saucer. Here's the final version that we did get for the show or the movie. By the time the model was finished, the Reliant had been flipped over, and the spar in the middle had become a roll bar, which supported the nacelles below the ship. So, over here again, we got some fantastic artwork. Um, just showing the the front of the ship, or I guess the back in this case, and the torpedo pod as well up there, which looks really, really neat. These are good drawings. Um, these drawings show the revised version of the Reliant with the weapons pod in the middle of the roll bar. On earlier versions of the design, the torpedo launchers had been built into the spars that balance the warp nacelles under the ship. And down here we got a piece of the model, that's the actual roll bar and uh, mega phasers and the torpedo pod from the uh, actual Reliant, uh, or the Miranda class model. The roll bar was a separate part of the model that could be removed, giving the ship a different profile. ILM also built separate models of the bridge dome and the glass in one of the nacelles. So. Of course, we know the, the Miranda class went on to be a variety of other ships in TNG just because you could remove that roll bar quite easily and add other modules and stuff. And we've done quite a few videos talking about all the variants of the Miranda class, um, that style of design on our show. So check that out as well, guys. If you haven't checked out the Trek Yard stuff, you need to check that out. Next page is just writing con, just talking about the, the writing of the movie. Um, you know, we got... Uh, um, Nicholas Meyer there and you know just talk about the the, the development of the movie because it's got quite an interesting uh, production history for sure that article continues lots of great shots of uh, the movie there and again continues with a, the glorious con overlooking everything um, and, and his supermen there the Chippendale dancers just saying um, and again, spoilers, there's something that happens to Spock, that's not quite the scene, that's at the beginning, that was the, the red herring, but this is the, something happens to him, I'm not going to say what, because I don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> and then another scene from the, or a clip, sh shot from the movie, clip, not a clip, it's just a shot. Anyway guys. Um, that's it for the magazine. On the back, you got a picture of the Concept Reliant from the top with the nacelles prominent there. Again, it looks basically the same. In, in, in a silhouette, it's the same ship. So, um, very cool. I'm looking forward to seeing the model. So, let's, let's get into that. Um, get it out of its little, little tiny box. So used to the XLs these days that, uh, yeah. So, here it is. Standard size for an Eagle Moss, not too big, um, but we got some great details there. Um, you can really see the differences of the between this and the final version of the Reliant, but it's still a very, very cool ship. I do like that feel. Um, I like the idea of two torpedo pods. I wish they kind of would have been put on the top with the roll bar in the middle and maybe like... I love how they changed those to mega phasers though at the same time and put the it's just interesting. I mean this this is so loaded for bear. It's just it's it's awesome. So let's just take a look at it here. Um it's basically the same. I mean the the front part of the saucer, um you've got USS Reliant, um the registry there, uh, the the red striping uh, and the little little tiny deltas there which is really nice. Uh the hull texturing uh, or 
at least the the paint job um, has a very nice Aztec pattern light gray and a darker gray <clears throat> we got some really nice um, as you can see there we got some retro control thrusters the phasers look really good there's not any real paint alignment issues on this it's actually really well done uh, so yeah the uh, a lot of nice details there uh, on the side of the ship you've got the the ship's name and uh, I believe it says United Federation of Planets and then Starship USS Reliant with the cargo doy. That's very small to see, uh, but it is there. There's also some window details on the side and around the saucer on the front and be behind the uh, strut attachment points as well. Um, going to the back part of the top of the ship, again, it's very similar to what we got with the final Reliant. Uh, not much difference there. Again, nice detailing though. You got the red striping, you got the little blue squares, and uh, the impulse control crystal with blue with the white dot in the middle, which looks a little odd, um, but not not a big deal. Uh, moving to the back of the ship, you've got the standard um, impulse engines and the uh, one and two marked shuttle bay doors. The shuttle bay doors seem a lot smaller on this version than they do on the final Reliant though. Um, I think there were some tweaks made to the back of the ship um, for the final version. Before we get to the, the coolness of it, let's get to the bottom of the saucer. Same thing. Lots of great detail. Uh, the Aztec looks good. The striping is good. The, the registry looks nice. Um, you even got Reliant behind the planetary sensor dome there, which is very nicely done. And moving back again, dark, greebly areas and uh, the impulse control crystal from the bottom. Um, so really nice attention to details on this one. It looks actually very, very nice. So let's move to the, the struts now. Uh, the struts at the attachment points on the top look really nice. Um, these nacelles are see-through. Uh, so if you have a light behind them, they will, they will glow. They're a, kind of a darker blue, which is nice. So you can actually see through those. Um, the nacelles themselves are the standard uh, Constitution class nacelles. No real difference there. You've got the NCC uh, 1864 on the... Um, or registry on the outer and inner parts of the nacelles <laughs> and uh, that's a really nice look it looks really cool um, I'm really a fan now if you move down follow the strut down it comes to the attachment points on the bottom and there you got the photon torpedo pods which are nice because they've got the the uh, striping very similar the banner style that's on the, the side of the secondary hull of the Enterprise they put that there which is nice um, and uh, again, amazing attention to detail. The, the bottom of the pods have uh, some red striping as well, as well as some blue squares, and it just looks really nice. Um, I do like the, the idea of two torpedo pods. Um, there's no real detail in the front or back of them. I mean, I think there's two tubes in each uh, one front and back so bringing that total up to uh, eight tubes altogether which I, like I said is loaded for bear this thing is amazing and this was originally not this one uh, the Miranda was originally called the Avenger class for a long time it was actually much more powerful than the Enterprise had the mega phasers those all kind of fell by the wayside when TNG came around and they decided the art department decided, started calling it the Miranda class um, but we've talked about that quite a bit on the show so if you want to check that out as well so there it is from the side and of course like that um, of course flipped the nacelles obviously but um, a cool fact Andrew Probert thought when they moved the nacelles to the bottom they should have been mounted like that because the feeds for all the nacelles would be going through that way so the the angle of them should be like that just upside down basically uh, I kind of disagree with that I think they'd be able to and I'm glad they did that. Um, that's one thing I don't agree with Andrew on. Uh, so I'm glad that they uh, they fixed that. But there it is, guys. That is the Concept Reliant. A cool little ship. A nice little piece of Star Trek history. Definitely worth getting. I do have the regular Reliant. I'd like to display these two side by side at some point. And uh, just to, to see the differences. What could have been. I'm sure there's a universe out there somewhere. Maybe the Kelvinverse. Where Star Trek II was made. And it had the ship like this. Wouldn't that be cool? Anyway, guys, let's head on over to the stand and, uh, you know, from stands hot, I stab at thee for hate's sake. Let's get to the turntable. All 
Alright guys, so here she is over on the stand, and again, you get a look at some of those really nice details. The stand fits nice and snugly, I gotta say. Uh, I just can't get over the feeling that this is on wrong, though. Because you just, you get so used to it looking like you've seen it for so many years as the right way. Um, for, so from certain angles, it's like it's wrong, but then you get an angle like that, and you're like, that's a cool looking new ship. That's neat. Again, it very much has a FASA uh, Star, Star Trek ship feel. I wish Eagle Moss would focus on FASA stuff, try to get the rights for them. I would love to have some FASA designs in my collection, even some Starfleet Battles ones. But sadly, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, so uh, if you display this on a lower shelf... Um, it looks really good. It kind of feels like natural. It doesn't feel like it's upside down. Um, my nacelles kind of squeeze in a little bit at the back. They aren't quite aligned properly. Um, I don't know if you guys can really see that. I think you can. Um, it's not that big of a deal. You only notice it from certain angles, but still. So it does make a good display piece on a lower shelf. If you go to an eye level shelf, again, it doesn't feel wrong because the roll bar isn't there. Um, it does feel like a new kind of ship and those torpedo pods on the bottom really add some cool look uh, to the design especially from this side the profile is really nice it definitely feels like a FASA design I'm sorry uh, for calling it FASA first of all because people freak out but uh, it definitely feels like a FASA type ship so uh, if you put it on an upper shelf it looks kind of funny from certain angles honestly it doesn't feel like it's it's right um, but then other angles right away it just pops and you're like oh yeah that's cool you know um, and the stand does obscure quite a bit that's one of the things even though the stands are clear I find that they do hide too much of the secondary hull I wish there was a better way for Eagle Moss to do their stands that's just a personal pet peeve of mine um, especially ships with the, like the Constitution where the, the secondary hull slots in between. It just feels wrong. Um, but anyway, that being said, there it is, guys. You guys can pick this one up anytime. Just head on over to Eagle Moss and click or click the link in the description below to get over there. Add this to your cart and you can use the discount code TREKYARDS10 to save yourself 10% off any kind of order from Eagle Moss, uh, except for pre orders. The code will not apply to pre orders, but it'll apply to everything else. So check it out. Use the discount code and have some fun and grab this thing if you're interested in it. So guys, that's it for this review. Uh, we have a bunch of other Ego Moss reviews on this channel. Lots of cool stuff. And like I said, videos talking about all the different variations of the Miranda class on our channel. So please go check those out and enjoy some of our content. And of course, the best way to do that is to click subscribe. Subscribe to both Trek Yards and the Captain Foley personal channel. There's always really great stuff on each one. At least I like to think so. And uh, so do a lot of other people. So be part of those people and join. And don't forget to check out other videos by us as well. Always great content. Always new content. And we will continue to make it for you. So until later, guys, I'm Captain Foley. Bye-bye.